Welcome to History Where It Happened. Today's episode is about a railroad. And just to back up a little, Southwest Vermont is really blessed with a vein of marble that runs from basically Manchester, Dorset, north to the Proctor, Rutland area. This vein sometimes is uh, 100 feet thick. This marble was used for construction and beautiful architectural monuments and so on. But in order to get that marble out, uh, because it doesn't do any good in the ground, you have to transport it. And that's where a railroad comes in. And even though I put on a railroad hat, I am not a railroad expert. And that's why I invited my guest, Bill Badger, to join us and comment about the railroad that was built exactly for the purpose of getting this marble to the marketplace. Bill is a longtime um, member of the Rutland Historical Society. In fact, he started, uh, excuse me, the Rutland Railroad Historical, Historical Society. And he uh, was actually there during the inception. Bill is a uh, local architect. His specialty, among many, is a preservation architecture. So I'd like to welcome Bill Badger, my guest, who will comment as we move through the show. Thank you, Dick. Welcome. My first question uh, would be to Bill to give us a little background about this railroad. About 1900, New York decided to embark on building a huge public library or big fitting of the city that was pr at its sort of peak of prosperity at that point. We have Probably still is peak, but anyway. Um, and the uh, um, company that got the uh, contract to provide the marble uh, was at Norcross Brothers, and they went looking for marble. And so uh, they found it in South Dorset, as Dick said, a lot of marble around here, but it's about five miles from the nearest railroad. And they began quarrying and quickly realized that horses and wagons weren't going to make it. They weren't going to be able to provide enough marble fast enough to do it. So they uh, planned a railroad uh, from Manchester, Manchester de connected with the Rutland and, and uh, Manchester Depot to the quarries in South Dorset, up, up here, and Manchester Depot down here. The, um, they decided rather than just be a, a captive industrial line to make it a common carrier so they could carry passengers and freight. I think they figured there'd be enough business and, and like so many railroads of the day, uh, instead of tacking and Pacific onto the end of it, they, they tacked Granville. I guess that was far enough to, to uh, envision going that far. Uh, they built it over the winter of 1902-1903, which was one of the, the coldest on record. Um, and in the beginning of 1903, they started hauling marble. Just a little uh, background here. We have a picture of the New York Public Library. I guess this was taken in the early 1900s. And you can see that this is a massive, massive undertaking. And the, how long did the railroad uh, last? The, the, if I remember right, the library was done in 1911. They got a number of other contracts for other projects, uh, DAR buildings, uh, Montreal art. I have to look it up. Anyway, yeah. a building in Montreal yeah, no, and, it's, and with the uh, medical buildings at Harvard. Um, and then operations wound down, the principal characters uh, died or were out of the operation, and it was sold to Vermont Marble in 1913. Um, Vermont Marble was the big company in the state, and they kind of bought up their competition. So they bought it, and um, they had a lot of other operations. I'm not sure how much they used the plant after that, um, because it was cheaper for them to do it take the marble elsewhere, but they may have used it some. 1917 was the last year of uh, operation of the quarry, and 1918 was the last year. They, the June 1st, 1918 was the last train on the Manchester, Dorset, and Granville. And then the track stayed in place, and in the early 1920s, um, the McCormick boys tried hauling some marble out of another quarry with a, with a surplus World War I Army truck with flanged wheels apparently welded onto a flat car. It was kind of a, there's one picture of it. It looks like quite the contraption. Right. And that was the, that didn't really work out very well. And, and uh, the, the tracks stayed in until the mid-30s when they were pulled up for scrap. 
That's interesting. Whenever I look at this picture of the New York Public Library, I'm thinking this is from, I think it was started, as you said, 1902 to 1911. That's nine years of marble being taken from Dorset, what is this, five miles down to the plant and then on down to uh, New York City. Well, it, it also served other purposes, though. I mean, it was, they always say it was the library built the railroad, or the railroad was built for the library. Or was but, the impetus for it? Uh, well, it was the reason. For the reason, the, yeah. Um, but I gave a talk this winter in, in Dorset, um, and a woman came up to me and said that her mother used to take the train from Dorset to Manchester to go on from Manchester to New York or wherever she was going. But the first five miles started on the M Manchester, Dorset, and Granville. Okay. Um, the purpose of this show really, or what we're going to try and do, is trace the route of the Manchester Dorset Railroad from its beginnings here where it meets the Rutland Railroad or it met all the way up to the Dorset quarries and point where it crosses the roads. And these are public sp spaces where you can see where the MDG rail bed still exists. And if you have any questions about this, after the show, you can contact the Manchester Historical Society, the Dorset Historical Society. We'll also put up some uh, GPS coordinates of these crossing points. And also go to the GNATV uh, website and see the show again to see where these points are. But let's start, Bill. Let's start here, right at the beginning, where the MDG Railroad met the Rutland Railroad. If you the, could comment on this. The switch was at the, um, at the end of Lincoln Avenue is the, the brick building that was the old uh, Bennington County Cooperative Creamery. Uh, and down in behind was the switch that went off the, the beginnings of the Manchester, Dorset, and Granville. Then immediately after it had left, it's, it branched off to the right where the plant was uh, between there and, and Richfield Road. And then the main line continued north and, and crossed um, several roads before disappearing back into the, to the woods again. So in this picture, we see that the actual railroad, if you go down there, I, I took this picture a couple of weeks ago, you can actually see the rail bed where it joins the uh, Rutland Railroad. You can actually look through there. I think they've kept it open because it's a power line. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Now let's continue, we'll go around over to Richfield Road, and we have a picture here to orient. We're now going to show the plant, but here is the place where I took this picture, and this is Richfield Road, and this is now, I'm trying to think of the name of the stores that are there, I think Earth, Earth Sky. Earth, Earth and Sea. Earth and Sea. And, and there's a, a early child care. Early child care is there. In. We now have another picture taken from that same location, showing the actual Norcross, I'm, I'm not sure the technical name, it was Norcro the Norcross? Norcross West. Norcross West Marble Works. I, I'm not sure the exact name. And this was this enormous uh, facility here. Now what we're gonna do is actually show some, um, a short clip of some video that we took a couple of weeks ago actually during the early spring season, showing uh, from Ridgefield Road where this massive plant was, just to orient everyone. And then we can comment on the actual pictures of the plant, which is where they exist today, uh, which is now a parking lot. This is Ridgefield Road looking south. That's over here is where we took the prior uh, still pictures of the Norcross West um, Marble Works. And as we pan, you'll see Mount Equinox in the background with the mudslide. And you'll see the big parking lot here. And that's where the entire the marble works was. This whole area was the marble works with the enormous crane. And we have a picture of, of that with the crane there after we finish this orientation. And now we're looking towards Depot Street, Richfield Road. And I've been told that this little building was the uh, Norcross West office building that was moved from across the road uh, to this location after the plant was uh, removed. Okay, we're back now 
we're still at that same location, and now we have a still image of that, uh, the crane system and the plant. I'm not sure in the video uh, exactly where this man would be that we're showing here, whether he was further back or whether that's generally the location was that parking lot. I think that's, the, I think that's pretty close. It's pretty close. That was a massive facility. I mean, there are hundreds of pictures of this, uh, of this plant and all the marble there, and it's really interesting to go through some of the archives on that. This was no small operation. Now, now we're going to go see some other uh, video that was taken of another location, and that location is on Depot Street, 1130, which we took which shows where the MDG, we're moving north now, where the MDG crossed um, 1130. It came out from the plant, came north past Discount Beverages, crossed Depot Street, and then went north. Now I'd like to show another picture that is very interesting. Actually, Bill provided this to me. I think it's very fascinating. It's, of course, a lot of these pictures are old and um, black and white and so on, but this is a wonderful picture taken looking north from, let's say, discount beverages just to orient people generally. And you can see Mount Aeolus in the background, and you can see the marble on either side, and if you look closely, you can actually see the railroad chugging along here, and this building, I believe, is still in existence. We're now going to move a little further north. We're going to go around Ridgefield Road and cut up to actually to Center Hill to show um, the MDG route. We're looking north now, and Bill, I think this is the actual rail bed here it's, with the marble. It is. And it's sort of a symbolic block of marble on the uh, middle of it, and this is the uh, Center Hill Antique Center. And if we come around, this house is very distinctive, and we, when we look at all photos, we can see that, see that house sticking up above the trees, and it's a good orientation point when you're looking at photos of the depot to see where are we. You're right. We have, uh, to follow this, is a, uh, a still image, and you can see looking north, meaning towards this, uh, you can see this house in the distance. Looking up Center Hill. The Gorgeous old, house. The old photos show this area was all clear, so there were lots of good pictures from from Center Hill looking back at the marble works. Now it's, uh, now it's buildings. And there's a lost soul. Yeah. And it's pointing out where the, where the track went. And right down, if it goes a little bit further. Get out of the way, cars. That's right there is where the, where the track went, or the edge of the parking lot of Discount Beverage. So right here is actually Route 30, 1130, and here's the route, and I believe this is the um, substation, yes. wh which is right here, and here's Discount Beverage. So Center Hill is right here behind us. Okay, now we'll move a little further north and this is one of the more fascinating areas. The MDG Railroad moved north, cutting through past um, Center Hill, and it emerges below Barnumville Road. And we actually have a, another clip, it's maybe 45 seconds to orient everyone, of where we are, and then we'll show pictures of where the actual MDG went under Barnumville Road. And I guess, what is it called now? It's called the, the Gulf? The well, it was always called the Gulf. It's a stream, stream bed that came down from the higher land up around um, where Vermont Country Store headquarters is uh, to quite a, quite a steep cut and enters up down the lower area. So the railroad chose that way to access to get from the lower area by the depot up onto higher ground, ran next to the stream, and built a marble bridge uh, to allow Barnumville Road to go over the top of the railroad. Okay, great. Well, let's watch the video now. And you've probably passed this a hundred times, but there is a gully down there, and it's known as the Gulf. And now we're just panning to give an orientation so you understand how close we are to Route 7A. You notice the bits and pieces of scrap marble lying around? We know where that came from. 
There's Route 7A right there. Behind that car is Route 7, so oh. we're only about 50 yards from 7A. Because they stopped just before they got to my office. <laughs> Back again at that bridge. This guy seems to show up. I don't know. He's a lost, uh, lost soul. But now he's pointing down. There's the Barnumville Road. Bill was pointing out. There's the culvert for the stream in the bottom of the, of the Gulf. And remember the stream and the culvert, because we have a picture to follow, which will show where the stream went through when we actually show the actual um, bridge for the MDG Railroad. And the, the railroad bed is right here. Well, we're back again, and now we'll show you exactly what that bridge looked like o over 100 years ago. And if, Bill, you comment there on the, where the tracks are well, and where the stream is. and If you look closely, you see it at the left is, a <coughs> is an arch and an older gray stone area. That's where the stream, uh, stream went under what I believe was the old road. So the road probably dipped down, crossed over the stream there, and went back up the other side. Well, the railroad came, came through. Uh, one thing they had was a lot of scrap marble, so they, they built marble abutments raised the road high enough for the railroad to go underneath it. And rather than tear down what was there for the stream, they simply built over it. And then a small wooden later iron bridge uh, over the railroad. And as far as I know, that survived into the 1950s. And it was considered dangerous and it was narrow. And, and uh, so sometime in the 1950s, they pulled the bridge up and filled in everything around this. So to the best of my knowledge, the marble is still under there, but it's all been buried. With the dirt we just saw in the video. That's, yeah. that's interesting. Now we're going to move further north. We'll go back about, what, 50 yards to Route 7. We'll go up to where um, the MDG crossed Route 7 by the Vermont Country Store. We have a 30-second, 40-second uh, video, again, shot earlier, to orient everyone where we are. And, just think of how many times you passed this route and didn't know that the former MDG railroad had crossed. We're now at the intersection of uh, where the MDG crossed um, Route 7A by the Vermont Country Store. This, the, the edge of the parking lot, when they built the building, the edge of the parking lot they left as a tree line and it's a kind of an unusual diagonal line across a and the reason it's the unusual diagonal line is that's the uh, roadbed for the railroad. Right here, right along the... They've since thinned it out and cleaned it up. This is very visible from 7A when you're driving 7A. Here so we are on 7A. The MDG crossed about here, and then it went into the northeast part of the Aspen Hotel, motel. There's the sign for the Aspen, so you should be oriented now. This, as, as we just mentioned, um, at the northeast corner, when the owners of the Aspen Hotel, Bruce and uh, Scott Welsh, during uh, landscaping or excavation, they found some rails from the MDG uh, Railroad, and they have them in the back of their uh, motel. What, what typically happened is when a railroad fell out of use, if they didn't pull the tracks up immediately, they would pave over them. So then when they, they pulled up the rails for scrap, they didn't exactly want to tear up the, the pavement. So the rails stayed underneath the highway. And they're still there. What we're trying to show here is how heavy these rails are. And in a way, we're very grateful that uh, Bruce and Scott have saved these. Because a lot of these tracks were sold, I think you mentioned earlier, in the, in the 30s or, or at some time. 1934 it went, 1934, it was pulled, it went, to, yeah. went to scrap. Now here is 7A. Again, the Vermont Country Store is to the right. We're panning north. And this is where the MDG crossed 7A. And we'll just kind of walk the route, and I think if you look carefully, 
This is what I thought it looked like the bed. I don't know, uh, Bill, if I was in the right area or not, but there's the North Shire uh, Looks like there's fellowship. A, there's a suspect looking mound here, which was probably the, the railroad bed. And along here in this area is where they found a couple of rails. Okay, now we'll move further. This is the, a big gap here. We go from, here's where the Vermont Country Store and Route 7 are. We go all the way up here to South Dorset. This is all in woods and fields now and on private property. Up here is Morse Hill Road where it crosses Route 30. And we took some uh, video of that section where it crosses and it's pretty uh, clear now because some of the sections have been actually cut or had been previously maintained by one of the owners. There's the sign of Morse Hill and Route 30 and to the right and I'm going to stop it, but we'll see where the actual MDG Railroad crossed from Morris Hill across Route 30 and then continued on out to the quarry. But it's very visible today. Right there. Right there. And I understand someone used to... Peter uh, Brooks, when he owned the, the uh, house that's now Dorset Nursing, used to mow it. I'm seeing him mow it. And uh, I think it was a nice bit of a token, a tip, tip of his hat to history to keep the railroad, the railroad bed mode. Very, very visible today. Case the trains trees came back. You might want to be ready for it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now here's Route 30. Continue on Route 30. And then we do have some stills of the train actually crossing at this spot. And this is where the South Dorset station was. They had three stations, Manchester, uh, South Dorset and Quarry, and they were little three-sided shelters, looked kind of like bus stops, but the, uh, the uh, South Dorset crossing was at this, uh, the station was at this crossing. It was right here. Ah. <coughs> and here's another interesting uh, picture. I took this picture uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it's of a house right there at the corner of Morris Hill Road. Now, I'm not sure if this is the original house, but Bill had provided a uh, picture, which I'm going to show now, of where the actual MDG Railroad uh, crossed, and we believe that may be, I say may, be the house. I guess there are some other older houses in the areas. I'm not sure if any have been moved or so on, but this is a picture of the MDG Railroad uh, crossing Morse Hill and Route 30. Well, it's hard to tell because you can't see much of the house and there are a number of houses in the area of a similar style, so I'm not sure which one it is, but it appears to be a work train on the MD&G, and um, these guys up in the, the, on the first car are shoveling off something black, probably cinders. Cinders were used as ballast, typically. And then they, so it's, the, they've sent a bunch of guys with a very highly sophisticated piece of equipment, flat cars and shovels, out to, <laughs> looks like they're going out to work on the line, maybe in the spring. No, it's, it's hard to say, but it uh, looks, like looks like a work train at the, at the Morse Hill Crossing. Okay, very good. <clears throat> now we're going to show another 45 second, maybe a minute uh, video where the uh, MDG actually came out of, and you weren't with me, but Scoop, the producer here, we took the pictures, Bill, of actually where it came out of uh, the area of the Dorset RV Park, and then he pans, and you see the actual quarry. Of course, there were two quarries there, but let's watch that video, and I guess we'll, we'll comment as we watch the video. This little film clip is, uh, was taken out on Route 30. This is Route 30. I'm looking south towards Manchester, and down in this area is the uh, Dorset RV Park. And the MDG Railroad, as I understand it, th came through the RV yep. park yep. and then either paralleled this road or came further into the quarry. Of course, there were two quarries there. But we're panning around now and you'll see the Norcross West marble quarry. This is, this is main quarry the first one they opened. 
1917, when they were through, they, there weren't a lot of orders for marble. So there was a lot of block that was just piled up and waiting for orders to come and it never came. So there's a lot of material they took out hoping to sell, but it didn't. I'm just pausing it here for a second. It's hard to pick up here, but they actually have some of the pipe uh, fittings that were used to uh, secure the derricks that would swing these blocks over to the MDG Railroad. So these blocks, as I understand it, are original to the quarry, but these have all been moved uh, over time. You can sort of get a hint when they've, when they've weathered to a dark gray, they haven't been moved in a while. Where the, where the marble is f fresh and light colored, it's been moved. Now that gives you a feeling of what the quarry looks like today. But now I'm going to show you some still pictures of what the quarry looked like. Uh, I'm guessing, maybe you know, Bill, uh, when this was taken. I've seen different dates for different photos, 1911, 1917. Well, the, the, main, the main quarry was closed in 1913, and they okay. continued work on the plateau, the upper quarry. And so this is main quarry, and it's still in operation. So it's sometime before 1913. Okay. That's and it's pretty deep. So you know, my, my guess would be 1911, 1912, somewhere in there, okay. towards, towards the end. That's good. That's, uh, so keep that in mind, 1911. But just to give you an idea of the size and the relative, uh, well, the relative size of this quarry, I uh, used some poor man's uh, magic marker here, <coughs> and I marked up the same uh, photograph again. And, what, and on this photograph, what I tried to do is orient people. The red circle is Route 30. So we're actually looking from back of the quarry out towards uh, Route 30. And down below, if it comes out, I'm not sure, is I've circled two men in yellow to give you an idea of the size and depth of the quarry itself. So this, uh, this must have been f fairly far along in the production of that or use of that quarry. I think, yeah, I think it was near the end. N near the end, yeah. And then, I didn't know how to do this, so I apologize, I'm not a Photoshop person, but the blue mark is uh, the water line generally uh, today when you go over there and swim. And that's, uh, a lot of that machinery is still there. In fact, there was several years ago, I forget when, it was over 10 years ago that they actually brought up some of the um, equipment here, including um, one of the pulleys, which is now visible over at the Dorset Historical Society. Well, Bill, thank you very much. You're welcome. Do you have any final comments one way or the other, or uh, recommendations? Uh, otherwise, I think on good days like this, when the sun's out, if you go and squint in the quarry, you see the, you see the library in reverse down there. <laughs> okay.